Highlights of 11 games are in the books. Let's head back to Spencer Tillis, joined now by the Tulsa World's Bill Haston to take an in-depth look at a few of the big ones and tell us what they mean in the grand scheme of things. I appreciate it, Nathan. As you said, joined now by Bill Haston. And I tell you what, we got to see another dominant performance out here by Bixby. I have to start with this, and I'm curious to see what you yeah. can say about it. Is this the most dominant team that you've seen in Oklahoma? No. Jinx in 97 was the most dominant team in the history of Oklahoma high school football. Jinx in 97, I, it, I would blow our entire segment here if I recited all of the superlatives of that 97 Jinx team. But for a, an eight year run that could, could have been a championship in every one of those seasons, they stumbled in 2017. But for a, like an eight year run, this is as good as I've ever seen. And they uh, look good again out here tonight. No Presley or I, really, I mean, he was hobbled a little bit out. You could see he was limited. Right. And yet they still are able to put up 69 points. What was working so well from on offense? Well, it, <laughs> of course, it started in the worst possible way for Booker T. Through the first three plays of the game, uh, Booker T has a penalty. Booker T has a turnover. Bixby has a touchdown. Three plays in. Bixby's on, I mean, I'm sorry, Bixby had a touchdown on the third play of the game. So three plays into the game, Booker T's already committed a turnover, already made a penalty, and Bixby walks it in for an easy touchdown, which is exactly what Jonathan Brown said before the game. You got to minimize mistakes or you got no chance. Well, Booker T really didn't give itself a chance. But, uh, you know, last year Booker T uh, lost at Bixby by a big score. In that game, Braylon Presley has 400 yards himself and five touchdowns. Well, tonight he has 60 yards on 10 carries a light workload because he's recovering from a, a leg injury right mm -hmm. and still they score 69 they have so much i marvel at how much weaponry they have it's crazy bo bertelli has three touchdowns tonight connor kirby run him out there on third and short and chances are he'll take it to the house yeah i absolutely. mean they got so many weapons luke has dylan has etc well, real quick, they clearly weren't looking ahead, but we're going to go ahead and sneak peek at what comes yep. next. There's a big matchup next week in the first round, Broken Arrow and Owasso. What do you think yeah. about the rematch of the father-son duo? Well, I'm, I, I'll be there, and, and I'm excited to see it. Uh, I just know it's a miserable experience for the Blankenship family. It truly is, it's, and it's not something that they're overstating for the media or whatever. It's mm -hmm. really painful. In fact, Bill Blankenship's wife and Josh Blankenship's mother didn't even attend the first game. She didn't want to see it. So, uh, I mean, it's a compelling matchup. Should be a, a, a hopefully a more competitive game than we saw, you know, back in September. But uh, it's a tough game for the Blankenship family, uh, father and son matchup. And uh, but you know, Owasso stumbled last week, shockingly. Or yep. Was it two weeks ago? But but, but Owasso had a uh, yeah uh, two weeks ago. So Owasso stumbled late in the season at a time when I thought they were really kind of right there with Jinx. Yeah. And and now I, I kind of feel like Jinx is a pretty clearly defined favorite going into the 6A1 postseason. Yeah, uh, we're going to have to see. I mean, certainly yeah. a lot of talent in that division. Now, if you missed any of the games tonight, you can get the entire recap tomorrow on TulsaWorld.com.